Since 1990, the GDP per capita in Vietnam has been booming, it increased from $95 to nearly $2,700 over a 30-year period, despite the fact that its population only grew by 25%. Even after accounting for inflation and loss of purchasing power, Vietnam saw a fourfold growth over this time, the poverty rate has dropped from 60% to less than 5%, and with the country emerging as a major exporter. It's worth noting that Samsung, the Korean electronics behemoth, accounts for nearly all of the country's exports. As a result, Vietnam's economy has become a model for economic development. Almost all indicators are increasing dramatically. How did this formerly war-torn country transform into the only significant Southeast Asian economy to avoid a recession in 2020 in less than 30 years? To respond to this, we must examine what happened to Vietnam's economy after the war. The Vietnam War with the Americans framed the entire framework of where the country is today. The war had completely destroyed the country's economic foundation by 1975. And you'd think that, like so many other economies before it, Vietnam's would thrive in the years after the war. Unfortunately for Vietnam, it was one of the poorest countries in the world. With the Communist Party's five-year goals, they are focusing on collectivist agriculture. This did not exactly promote strong economic growth for a while. At the time, Moscow was Vietnam's main economic partner, and other fully developed communist countries banded together to promote trade among themselves. For a time, Vietnam and other communist countries enjoyed relative peace. Vietnam's economy, on the other hand, had stagnated and was barely scraping by by the middle of the 1980s. After it became clear that full-fledged communism was falling short of expectations, a new strategy was proposed. One that would be critical to Vietnam's economic development. We'll now look at why Doi Moi changed the game. Leaving aside my terrible pronunciation, the 1986, Doi Moi reforms were a broad economic overhaul aimed at opening up a closed system to international trade and dismantling a planned economy. Despite the fact that the country is still a major recipient of food subsidies, the initial focus was on agriculture, which makes sense given that 70% of the workforce worked in the fields. The shift in emphasis shifted from collectivization to profit-driven individual farming, a place where farmers may decide their own prices and keep all profits. It quickly resulted in a significant increase in agricultural output. The changes, however, went beyond agriculture, with economic stabilization taking precedence. The country's currency, the dong, was depreciated, and budget deficits were balanced. Simultaneously, the number of ineffective government monopolies or state-owned enterprises fell from over 12,000 in 1989 to less than 600 in 2016. Mergers and sell-offs continue to occur even after several rounds of reorganization. All of this coincided with policies aimed at promoting private businesses from the household level upward. A new enterprise law promoted the registration of these new domestic businesses in the year 2000 bringing them from the informal to the official sector. It is critical to view this shift as a gradual process rather than a single event that caused employment in state-owned enterprises and agriculture to decline while private employment skyrocketed from almost nothing. Vietnam's seemingly endless growth in exports has been a significant result of the entire reform process. In essence, their exports have tripled in the last 10 years, accounting for more than 100% of their GDP, this is a situation that can occur before a country's exports and imports are balanced. As a result of the country's rapid growth in exports, companies such as Apple, Samsung, and Nike have opened offices there. As a result, Vietnam is now the region's second largest exporter of electronics, and the largest exporter of textiles. However, how did Vietnam go from being one of the world's worst economies to a rising exporting power? While it is true that production is shifting away from China, economists frequently claim that Vietnam's export success is due to this trend without explaining why Vietnam is succeeding. Why not any of the other countries? 
International investors are including Vietnam in there, China plus one strategy because they have recognized that their ostensibly global supply chain is heavily reliant on China and thus vulnerable to unforeseen events. Trade disputes or the significant divergence between the US and China. This is usually followed by a sentence explaining how businesses are attempting to keep rising prices in check. After all, the world's second largest economy has seen a triple digit increase in average manufacturing earnings over the last 10 years. Vietnam's is still a fraction of the price. Let us now look at the main reasons for Vietnam's economic rise to ASEAN export dominance. The Export Similarity Index is an excellent way to investigate why Vietnam is such a good substitute for China. This index, which has a range of 0 to 100%, allows us to calculate the amount of export overlap between two countries. The degree of export resemblance grows in proportion to the percentage. Because of the high score, the replacement nation should find it easier to take over the exports of the one being compared to. When this index is used to compare other Asian countries to China, Vietnam comes out on top. Why is this possible? In fact, the top 10 exports of both countries share 7 out of 10 industries, including electrical, machinery, computers, textiles, and furniture. It is less surprising that both countries have had strong export years despite the global economic downturn because the rise of work-from-home opportunities has increased demand for new electronics, furniture, and computers. This was great news for Vietnam, as exports increased by nearly 10% in the third quarter alone. Despite the fact that it is critical to understanding this trend, this still leaves the question of why Vietnam's economy grew so quickly unanswered. The true solution lies in the trade liberalization that occurred in the middle of the 1980s. If you look at a timeline of pro-trade agreements, you will notice that the Vietnamese have actively pursued this. The foreign investment law was one of the first laws enacted in Vietnam in 1987. This allowed foreign-owned businesses to enter the country's previously closed domestic market in 1994. After the United States lifted its trade embargo, Vietnam was able to join the ASEAN Free Trade Bloc in 1995. Perhaps most importantly, it became a member of the World Trade Organization in 2007. Contrary to popular belief, Vietnam has made substantial investments in human capital to capitalize on these free trade opportunities. According to the PISA Standard Worldwide Assessment, which ranks nations based on the exam results of their 15-year-old children, it is nothing more than a magnet for cheap labor. In reading and math, Vietnam outperforms the majority of advanced economies. Placing fourth in science is quite impressive. Meanwhile, population investment is not restricted to the classroom. Vietnam's Human Capital Index has risen from 0.66 to 0.69 since 2010. As a result, a child born today will be less productive than they could be if they had access to a full education and good health. The PISA Standard Worldwide Assessment, which evaluates countries based on the exam results of their 15-year-old students, claims that it is nothing more than a magnet for cheap labor. Vietnam outperforms the majority of developed countries in arithmetic and reading. Everything is fine and good now that Vietnam has made impressive progress over the last three decades. It is, however, still a long way from achieving its economic goal of having a good standard of living by 2045. Vietnam's main obstacles to overcome are as follows. Vietnam's recent success has been largely attributed to its position as a significantly less expensive manufacturing base. This has provided the country's economy with the jobs it requires to move toward middle income status. However, Vietnam is still in the early stages of this process. Rising automation, which is expected to reduce Vietnam's comparative advantage in cheap labor, is threatening this increase in employment. Vietnam has the third highest trade surplus with the US, trailing only China and Mexico. The country was named one of the top 10 currency manipulators by the US Treasury Department in early 2020. 
launching a Section 301 investigation, the same procedure used to impose duties on billions of dollars in Chinese imports, which, if applied to Vietnam, would severely undermine any business ambitions to shift export-oriented manufacturing out of China. The aging population is a frequent topic of discussion in many emerging nations. In fact, Vietnam's population is one of the world's fastest aging, according to projections, Vietnam's elderly population will reach 17 million by 2029, accounting for 16.5% of the total population. In 2038, the figures will be 22.2 million and 20.2%, respectively, and 31 million and 27% in 2069. The issue of an aging population is frequently brought up in discussions about many emerging nations today. In reality, Vietnam's population is aging at one of the fastest rates on the planet. Based on projected growth rates, there will be 17 million senior citizens in Vietnam by 2029, accounting for 16.5% of the total population. In 2038, the figures are expected to be 22.2 million and 20.2%, respectively, and 31 million and 27% in 2069. Many of its neighbors have gone before it in this regard. Overall, we can see that Vietnam has advanced significantly over the past three decades from a very low foundation, especially when you take into account the fact that just under 40% of the population is still engaged in agriculture despite the reforms of 1986. The importance of moving forward cannot be emphasized, first in agriculture and later in the rest of the economy and society. It would be oversimplified to claim that Vietnam's success has been based on a migration from China without considering the country's dedication to free trade, investment in human capital, and developing middle class as factors that have made it so alluring. However, there is legitimate concern that Vietnam will not be able to follow in the footsteps of so many other countries. Due to one of the world's fastest aging populations, the difficulties of automation, and the potential for tariffs. And now it's your turn. Do you think Vietnam's export success will continue? Will it be able to follow in the footsteps of so many other countries? Please express your thoughts in the section below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing. This is Visionomics. Thank you for watching until the end.